Hi everyone, this video is part four of the 3A series on development for AP Psychology students. This particular video focuses on language development. As you know, unit three involves two major components, development and learning. And for my students, we are going to divide it into two sets, A and B. And in part A, we're focusing on development. And this particular video is part four, and it focuses on communication and language development. These are the two key focus questions that I will answer throughout today's video. These are the vocabulary concepts that you should take note of while you're listening to today's video. By the end, you should be able to define and describe them. Since this video is about language development, let's start by defining language. Language is communication. It's our shared way of expressing our thoughts and our ideas. Language can be spoken with our mouths, it can be written with pencil and paper, and it can be signed with our hands. Language is more than just sounds and symbols and gestures, it's actually a complex system with rules. And our ability to use language is remarkable because we can pull from thousands of words in our memories and then follow a complex set of rules to express our ideas quickly and accurately. And in this video, I will break down the different components of language and how we have acquired language. Speech and language are made up of several components that work together to make meaning. The College Board wants students to be familiar with these components of speech and language, phonemes, morphemes, semantics, syntax, and grammar. Phonemes are the smallest unit of sound. In language. Now I have the word chat on the screen. Chat has three phonemes. It does have four letters, but it can only be broken down into three sounds. Ch, a, t. Now to remember what a phoneme is, remember the word phone, and phone means sound. So phonemes are the smallest unit of sound. In language. Sometimes I find that this is difficult for students because students know that every letter carries its own sound, but in the English language, some of our words have letters that work together and they can't be broken apart. So chat is a great example of a word that does not have the same amount of phonemes as it has letters in the word. There are also things called morphemes. Morphemes are the smallest unit of meaning in language. This can be one single word or even a part of a word, like a prefix or a suffix. Morph means to change its meaning, so maybe that will help you think about morpheme, or you can think of the M and meaning in language. Now the word readers has multiple morphemes or multiple units of meaning within a single word. It has the word read, it has er or er, and if you add er to the end of a word, it means that it's someone who does this action. So we have someone who reads, and then we have an s, which implies that there are multiple readers, not just one. So this particular word has multiple units of meaning within one single word. Some words just have one unit of meaning or one morpheme, but some, if they have prefixes or suffixes, have multiple elements of meaning within that one word. Semantics. Semantics refers to the meaning of words and sentences. So what does the word itself mean? So if you think of like semantics, it sounds like sense, like what does th this doesn't make sense or this does make sense. So here's a great example of the semantics of a word. The word bank could have multiple semantics. Bank could mean a riverbank or it could mean a financial institution. Depending on the context, its semantics or its meaning could be different. Then you need to be familiar with syntax. Syntax is the rules for arranging words into sentences. If you think of syntax as sentence structure, that might help you think about the arrangement of the words in the sentence. So my example on the screen is the dog chased the cat. This follows the correct syntax or arrangement in English. This is the appropriate way to order the words. Now it would not be appropriate or it would be incorrect to say chased the dog cat the. 
this would be the wrong ordering or the wrong syntax of the words. Finally, there's grammar, and grammar is the system of rules that governs how we use our language. So grammar is a big, broad system of rules that includes all kinds of things like syntax or um, different tenses, whether it's past or present or punctuation. Grammar includes our large system um, of rules. How to remember grammar, if you think of grammar, grammar like glue and this is what holds all of our sentences and language together. So one example of grammar would be you could say he runs and you're referring to someone who's running and that has appropriate grammar. But if you were to say he run, he run doesn't have appropriate grammar. It's not using the right structure or tense. And so these components from phonemes to morphemes to semantics, syntax and grammar work together to govern our language and help us create our sounds into sentences. So you also need to be familiar with how children develop language. Language follows a predictable pattern in development and it moves from simple sounds to full meaningful communication. You need to be familiar with the steps on the screen and I'll explain them to you. The first stage in speech and language development is cooing. And cooing happens around six to eight weeks. And this is where babies start to make oohs and ahs. They make sounds that are vowel like sounds. And this is their first step in experimenting with vocalization. The next step is babbling. And babbling starts at about four months of age. Babies start to produce a repetitive consonant and vowel um, pairing like ba, 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 or da, da, da. This includes sounds from many different languages. So it's not necessarily that a child is using words, but they're just creating the pairing of a closing sound with an opening sound. So it's not necessarily that they're creating words, but just sounds. By about 10 months, they're going to start narrowing these sounds into something that sounds more familiar to their home language. But at first, it's just going to be the closing and opening of sounds with their mouth. Uh, so they might make sounds like ma, 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 or ba, ba, ba in the babbling stage. The one word stage is going to happen at about 12 months of age, about one year old. And this is when babies use single words to convey an idea. So they might say something like dog, dog, or they might say something like mom, mom. And they're using that single word to convey meaning. Next is telegraphic speech. And telegraphic speech is going to happen around two years of age. This is when toddlers start to string together two to three words, focusing on key words like nouns and verbs. It's going to resemble like a telegram, uh, very short phrases. So they might omit some other elements of sentence structure, but it's going to have meaning. They might say, go walk, mommy, go walk, or want milk. And so they're stringing together words. They're still missing a few, but they're creating this telegraphic speech. This is going to be followed by overgeneralization. And this is when children are adding more to their language. What overgeneralization happens is when they misuse grammatical rules or they apply them in the wrong way. So it shows that they're understanding grammar, but they're either applying them too broadly or applying them incorrectly. So it shows that they're understanding grammar, but they're making errors. So overgeneralization might be something like um, daddy goad to the store instead of daddy went to the store. So the child is understanding the past tense of going somewhere, but they're using it incorrectly. Daddy goed to the store instead of daddy went. So these stages highlight the journey of making sounds into meaningful language and children pick up on this so quickly. Next, it's important that you understand critical and sensitive periods. A critical period is a special time in development when our brain is best able to learn certain skills. And if the right input or the right circumstances are not there, or if you're not exposed to what's needed to be exposed to, then it's possible that skill will never develop. For example, in animals, imprinting has a critical period 
period. Imprinting is the time when the infant or the newborn animal attaches to their mother. Ducklings need to see and attach to a caregiver like their mother shortly after hatching, and if they miss that chance, they might not form an attachment at all. Conrad Lorenz discovered that goslings and ducklings instinctively bond with the first moving object they see after hatching, which is often their mother, but Conrad Lorenz found that if he himself was the first object present, that they would imprint or attach to him um, or his boots, demonstrating that imprinting occurs during a critical period for attachment right after birth, and that is essential for their survival. In humans, language has a critical period. Some researchers believe that if a child is not exposed to language during early childhood, they may not fully ever learn it. This theory has been supported with evidence from the case study of Jeannie. Jeannie was neglected by her parents. She was kept isolated in her bedroom without hearing many sounds, very minimal um, auditory input, and she was discovered at the age of 13 years old. Jeannie missed almost all of early language exposure. And so when she was taken in by researchers and language experts, she struggled to learn just basic grammar, um, no matter how much was taught to her. Many point to this case as evidence for a critical period for learning language, that the brain's ability to learn the rules of language fades after childhood. There is also believed to be a sensitive period for acquiring a second language. A sensitive period is a time when it's easier to learn something, but not necessarily impossible afterward. People who learn a second language before puberty often pick it up more quickly and easily and sound more like native speakers than those who try to learn a second language after adolescence. This is described as a sensitive period rather than a critical period because adults can still learn a second language later in life, but they usually have a greater difficulty. So let me define these concepts before moving on. A critical period is a sensitive time in development when the brain is specifically ready to learn a skill. And if the right experience doesn't happen during that time, the skill may never fully develop. Whereas a sensitive period is a time when learning a skill is the easiest, but it's still possible to learn it later, it's just more difficult. And then imprinting is a form of learning where certain animals like ducks or geese form a strong attachment to the first moving object they see after hatching, which is usually their mother. And knowing about these uh, windows into our development helps us understand how people grow and learn, and in this case gives us more insight about language development. Since we're discussing language, I think it's important just to bring back a few familiar terms. As we already know from Unit 1, speech and language have been identified as functions that exist in the left hemisphere of the brain. In the frontal lobe, a small spot called Broca's area has been identified as the region responsible for producing speech, so the creation of sounds. Damage to this area is called aphasia, which is just a general term for communication disorders that are commonly caused by strokes or brain damage. Broca's aphasia is the inability to produce speech, and the individual will still be able to understand language, but when they try to speak, the sounds may be slow and broken. Wernicke's area is the small region in the temporal lobe that's responsible for language comprehension. If someone suffers from Wernicke's aphasia, they may be able to speak fluently, but it may not make sense, and they will likely be unable to understand others when they speak to them. So this brings us to the end of today's video. Let's do a few short questions for review. Remember, I'll read the question aloud and you'll need to pause to determine the answer. Question number one says, 18 month old Rebecca is in the telegraphic speech phase. Which of the following best represents something she might say? Question number two says, the word cat has how many phonemes? This concludes today's video lesson on language development. Be sure to check your answers to the review questions on the left-hand side of the screen and work through those key focus questions and make sure you can define our vocabulary concepts before closing today's video.